Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have an extremely special guest today. He is a PR agent. He's from Vegas, and his name is Mitch Carlson. He has been, he has worked with hundreds and hundreds of celebrities, authors, people of all different areas of life, and he has help people grow in their career, make people go elevate to different levels of life. And he has just, you know, brought people in front of the camera, has shown the world what their true potential is and help people grow to extravagant lengths in their life that they never thought was even possible. He's here today and he's going to share his story and his knowledge of how he did it, who he is, and how he's able to help any individual reach their goals, their dreams, and their aspirations. So it is an amazing honor, Mitch, to have you on our show today. I am so glad you came on. I really love what you do. I love how great you are and, you know, and how much you care about individuals, especially. You really have a warm, compassionate heart and you really make, you're a shaker and a mover and you really help people get to where they want to go. So, you know, tell a little people a little about yourself and what you do. I work in Las Vegas. I've traveled the world, spoken on stages in 63 countries, produced events in 19 countries, and have produced about 2,000 live in-person events. Virtual events is, is more of a new phenomena. But I've had the privilege and fortune to share the stage with some very notable people that are expressed in my bio. I don't want to restate it, but just a lot of people and one particular man that we would might call former President Trump at one time when he was known as the Donald, you know, to Sir Richard Branson and a lot of people in between. And I have found a common thread with these people. And I think it's something that I know your head's going to start nodding like this, like a doggy in just about a second. All of them... Any of these worldwide experts that wanted to be noticed and stand out, they've embraced two things very, very significantly and never stop embracing them. Number one, they're all published authors, me included. I'm preaching to the I see. I knew your head would bob, Stacy. Yeah. I just knew it. It was like on call. I don't have a string or anything. It just worked auto magically. You were out there and it the books separate you from everyone else. Now, why do I mention this isn't about how to get your book published? That's another interview that Stacy and I could go back and forth on. I've written 17 books myself, only published one. The rest I used as keys to selling something high end. You get this free book. It's not available anywhere. So I had to stay true to form a different way to leverage books, but published once by John Wiley and Sons out of New Jersey, where you're from. And mm -hmm. I think they're in Hoboken. Books with all of these famous people credentialize them. It legitimizes their celebrity status. It legitimizes their expert status and absolutely by default places them into an authority position. Mm -hmm. The second element that I want to talk about is TV. Yes, I said television. If you're under 40, you may not know what that is. But if you're above 40, it's something that exists. Okay, she's smiling again. I knew it on command. If you're <laughs> under 30, the only thing you know is YouTube. Well, if you are <laughs> above 30, you may still know about television. And I'm going to give you the ascension model of publicity. First of all, it starts with today it's important to be on social media. 20 years ago, it was a non-issue. Today, it's an essential. Because the first thing somebody does, albeit if you're interviewing for a job, you're interviewing to get on a platform to speak, somebody's responsible for checking your reputation and legitimacy. What's the first thing they do to you? All the way to you're out on a first date with Becky, Bill, and Becky is going to do what? It starts with a G and it's now a verb. It's called Google you. They're going to mm -hmm. investigate you. Google is no longer a noun. It's a verb. Uh, and they will <laughs> Google you and find out who you are, where you've been, what you've done. And this is all part of reputation management and manipulation. Because you can manipulate your reputation 
by using media to push down old press that may not be favorable. And one of the things I love to talk about is the importance of knowing where people are going to search for you. Because today it's an integrated media platform. It's online, offline, social media, podcasting, all of these elements. Because people ask me often, should I get on a podcast? I said, where are your listeners? Where is your audience? If your audience is listening to podcasts, then I'd say yes. If your audience is on television, I'd say yes. If they listen to radio like I do, I'm showing my age and that's fine. I listen to the radio when I drive. I don't listen to series. I listen to the radio because that's how I was reared. I'm an ex-radio guy myself out of LA. I don't know if I have a face for radio today, but back then I had a mouth for it. So I think radio is important. If you are a reader, it's important to make sure that you read public or you write public in publications where your audience reads. We mm -hmm. talked about that earlier, Stacy. Yep. If people are reading Thrive, then you make sure you have an article there or utilize your services to get you covered. That makes total sense. And if your audience is on TikTok, you're probably under 18 years old and you want to dance because you didn't get enough attention from daddy. All right. And if your audience is on TikTok, you're probably selling gaming software or something to that. I watch TikTok a few times. I understand that it's evolving to draw in older people today. May or may not be true. I don't know. I don't watch it. I watched it a few times and I realized, you know what? I feel like a dirty old man if I continue. I can't look at this stuff anymore. And just refer to me as dirty, not old. Thank you. So I just <laughs> want to emphasize the importance of message to market match. That's the crux of all of it. That is the formula. I don't need to go to the university to have some uppity professor with facial hair tell me what the definition of marketing is. It's where mm -hmm. it's finding the right message and going to that market. Message to market match is everything in marketing. I'm doing this interview today with Stacy because she was already credentialed up the yin yang and she has all this press behind her and she talked about or, or wrote about it. It caught my interest. What did I do before I and chose to engage with her. And now we've become quick buddies. But before I got involved with her on a, on a professional basis as to this, I did something that I mentioned earlier. I Googled her because she said she was an author of 20 books. I checked it out. Sure enough, her nose is exactly the same size as it was before I Googled her. It didn't grow like Pinocchio. It's just the standard Greek issue. <laughs> and it's there the same. <laughs> well, you got to have humor while you're working. That's always got to have some fun. And I look at everybody in their background. So it's important to manage your reputation. If you if you're looking to get into media, which is what I I the media booking agents inside the TV stations with with whom I have relationships will Google you extensively they will linkedin you extensively they will look through your facebook they will see if you have any reprehensible photos if you're holding alcohol delete them that doesn't serve you unless you're a sommelier and then you're holding a glass of wine while you're evaluating it great but if you're showing your buttocks in a photo looking back drinking and you're drooling with red eyes probably not a good idea to keep that on your social media. And I, I like to share, what would your grandmother say? So <laughs> let's start at the baseline. Clean up your negative media before you embrace new media or additional media or money-making media. Because if you're posting on Instagram just because you want to, you're feeling a bit insecure and you want to show that you've been at the gym and you've got a the starting the start of a, of a six-pack, wonderful. That isn't going to help you get on TV, okay? You want to have a clean image as much as possible. You can have a private 
room for friends if you want to show them your six pack or lack of pack, whatever pack you want to be separate and what the public can see needs to be clean. Then we can build from there. I wanted to go through that path. I think it's super important to manage your reputation. And, and Stacy, I checked you out before I engaged to cover mm-hmm. myself. My reputation matters to me. And I make sure that I'm clean. I don't have the issue of showing my butt. Nobody would pay to see it anyway. So I'm not taking photos of my rear end. I've got what I've got and that's fine, but you're going to get the front version of Mitch. Okay. And no dancing because I, I certainly have two left feet. It's mm-hmm. important to stay clear, clean. And with the objective is this is, would my grandmother approve or would right. she give me the eye? Or in my case, I had a German grandmother that smacked me when I got out of line. It's like, okay. Or shook me. She came mm-hmm. from Berlin and she had the Berlin shake. So it was, <laughs> You know, if I did something wrong, would, would my grandmother approve of this? And that's an easy filter to go through. We've all got granny in the background. Mm -hmm. It's not always milk and cookies. It's heavy judgment. Right. So true. So true. You know, I think nowadays with, especially the, the, uh, the way the media is set up, a lot of people see that you have celebrities that are singers and they have their backup singers and they're showing their parts and they're, you know, they're dressing a little bit on the scandalous side. So then yep. these young kids, they, they want to be popular like these celebrities, which will not happen. And so they are trying to mimic what they see. And unfortunately, they don't realize that nowadays you don't have to, you know, hire an investigator or spend X amount of dollars for a report when you're hiring somebody or when you're considering to invest in somebody. You could easily just go on their social media. But I think, you know, because of the the way the celebrities show themselves, and that's just to sell. It's to sell concerts. It's to sell, you know, it's, it's to sell, you know, the the music they sing or whatever they do, you know, they're acting. It, it gets attention and that's what they want. They don't care if it's good or bad, bad attention could be good attention, you know? So, you know, they just want to get acknowledged. They want to be put in pr- the press for whatever reason, but then you have young kids that aren't, you know, they don't grasp that understanding and, you know, so they try to mimic it and in the long run, it's going to hurt them too, you know, but they don't realize that. So is all press good press? You know, that's, you've heard that, ex- that expression is it, is all press good press? I mean, obviously it can hurt and then you have to have a reputation management issue. But if you look at, I mean, we're in this political race right now. Oh my gosh, what a, what a poop show it is. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it's, it's kind of fun and scary and crazy. I don't think there's been any time in American history since I've been alive that it's been so contentious and just yeah. wild. It's a circus out there. Yeah. Between um, what's going on. We've got a president who's not seeking re-election because of ageism and, and then the vice president coming in, the presumptive nominee. And, uh, you know, Donald Trump, I don't need to even elaborate that uh, he's mm-hmm. an interesting man. Uh, and it's and, you know, and there was the assassination attempt. We've got all this. Is that good? Pre- it's a lot of awareness. It's a lot of awareness. And I think some bad press could be good press, but not all bad press. It all depends on what the topic is, what is there being, you know, what they're being um, accused of or what what is being told. And does things blow over over time? Yes, after after a while, things tend to blow over. But in the current moment, you could actually hurt yourself tremendously. Not only can you hurt your career, but you can get fired or you can get blacklisted in, 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 in the celebrity world. You could lose sponsorships. If you make a lot of money with sponsorships, you know, they will back out as soon as one bad thing happens or has been told told about you because you're represented in their company, you know, whatever they stand for, you represent and they're, they don't want themselves affiliated with you at all. So in that sense, you could lose millions and millions of dollars, you know, so in some ways it couldn't be, it might not be so bad. And in some ways it could be horrific. So we've seen that. I mean, look at Kobe Bryant when he had the, uh, I mean, you know, rest his soul, 
but he had some issues. He lost a lot of sponsorships during that alleged rape uh, yeah. time. I mean, it was, I, I, I don't want to comment beyond, but certainly there's the, the, the appropriate example, you know, yeah. and, and they lose these sponsorships. Oh my gosh. And what was the Kanye West? He yeah. lost, he lost a billion dollars. Yes. A billion dollars. Yes. I mean, I'd like to be eligible, but because he opened his mouth with anti-Semitic comments and whatever else he said, he got pressed for it, but that backfired in his wallet. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know, sometimes celebrities purposely put things out there, but you got to be very careful when you put things out there. You got to really think it through and you got to be, you know, and it's better to have good press, you know, than to have the bad press, you know, and, you know, and, and if you're going to try to, if you have not, you know, because what happens is you're in three classes, you're in the A class, the B class and the C class. And once you slip out of that A class, you know, you're get you're worth less. And then if you sit you're in the C class, well, you're just you're you're just living it in in regular middle America, you know the average happy life, and you know you're not you're not having as much money as as, as the you know and living the life of class A and class B, you know. So you know people want to try to do whatever they can to get acknowledgement, see if they can seat back in and try to make a few more bucks, and and doesn't always work that way. It's not as easy as it sounds. No, it's not, and. You I mean you you explain that very well? Yeah, there are different classes up, so I think it you got to be careful. You get, and it's better to be clean. Controversial is okay, but to go outright what he did, the Jewish, a lot of the Jewish people are involved in the media, and to make oh, yeah. anti-Semitic comments like, "What were you thinking? Exactly. What were you thinking? You're insulting all these people uh, mm -hmm. that are they're the ones that are controlling this. It's just ridiculous." I mean, it, right. that's not a nice person, number one, to make those blanket. I don't like that type of racism, number yeah. one. And number two, what were you thinking? Why? These are the people that control the media. And yeah. you're talking bad about them? Like, hello? <laughs> exactly. Hello? Exactly. You know, I think that was the problem. There wasn't any thinking. They just, re they just did, you know, they just blurted out what, Ever they they you know came to mind whatever they thought whatever they felt they just blurred it and they didn't think of the consequences you know they didn't stop to think of the consequences and when you do that you cause problems for yourself yeah and so that's that's something about publicity is like every action creates a reaction and yes. sometimes <clears throat> sometimes it's slow when you have a presence. I mean, I know the importance of books as a great PR tool. I was retired for three years living in Lima, Peru in 2010. And I got a ding on my phone. I had this book, which was published by John Wiley and Sons. I have a coupon inside. You get a consult for a thousand dollars with me one hour. And it hit, bang, PayPal. I I picked this. Who's this? The book was published in two thousand and eight, and it was two years later. Two yeah, two years later, it was already off the bookshelves at that point. It wasn't the airports and all this, but this yeah. guy needed a specific strategy on direct mail, which this book was unique direct mailing strategies. They used to own a mailing house in L.A. I wrote the right. book more of a credentializing than anything. I wasn't actively involved. I'd sold my business. I was out of the business. I was retired. Right. I'm now I'm retired and doing my thing. But I got this. That's a, the power of magazines also. You know, it's yeah. also a media source. Somebody mm -hmm. can pick it up reading, waiting in a lobby somewhere. And yes. all of a sudden they take action on it. You just don't know. They can listen to a podcast months later and you just don't know where business can come from fast forward. I got on a call with this guy for his hour consult. He hired me for a six month contract for consulting at 16 grand a month. Hello. Uh -huh. Yeah. I unretired. <laughs> it's like, I'm not going to turn that down. It was easy. And I did it all from remote when I was living in Peru. Right. You know, and I went, I met him one time. I flew to LA back just to meet him and the, the team. And I'd met him over, uh, I think it was Skype back then, or it might have been Zoom. I don't know if Zoom was around then. It might have been Skype. Saw him on video. I think it was Skype. That was the old format. That was, yeah. 
yeah, I think it was Skype. So we did the, the Skype interview. They asked me questions and they bannered around and he says, okay, how much do you charge? And what, what do you want done? And I, I just told him on the phone without blinking. I didn't need the money. Right. I didn't need it. They wanted me. Did I rape them? No, I gave them the value they paid for. And right. it was, I said, I can help you for this amount of time. After that, I'm going to unretire. I'm going to retire again. Right. I'm going to go back. And then I moved to Asia after that. But I want to just mention books as publicity are huge. There's an example. But I have to share a little bit of a corollary to it. Now, I don't know how it worked this way. If I had the elves in, in space working for me or something else happened. Three more clients came the same month. And then my consulting was over 45,000 a month in consulting. I, I, I was retired, but I couldn't turn the money down. It was a yeah. bit of a scorecard and it all came from my book is my point. Right. And different people unrelated. None of them knew each other. That's how powerful a book is. It can be leave legacy. I don't know if you've got stories like that or if you'd maybe did an interview on your book. And then all of a sudden someone called you and hired you to do coaching work for them or consulting. Oh yeah. You, it's a matter of spraying a lot of throwing a lot of mud at the wall and seeing what right. sticks. That's yes. what good publicity will do. It's of course better to use precision. And if you find the right media outlets, it's a matter of using a rifle with a scope shooting for your target, or do you have buckshot? Buckshot can work. You might, a few of the pellets might hit the target, but a lot of them are going to be lost. Right. I prefer laser focus and mix with sampling other platforms. And I yeah. shared with you this whole guesting platform for me on podcasts is very new. I've done now about 15 interviews over the last six weeks, and I've done five just today. It's started to build this huge momentum. I suspect. It's going to pay off. I've already seen the payoff. Many of these podcasts have not even gone live. They're recorded right. and then they are broadcast later. But the connections with the podcast hosts have been huge. You and I have a connection now. Right. Because we are living the publicity game. You've made this platform available to people. And I have availed myself to your platform. And then now we have a connection soon to be friendship. I mean, you might even get a Christmas card come Christmas. I don't know. I'm generous right around December, but, it, but that's what happens through these yeah. relationships. My career as a speaker has only been built on contacts as a result of meeting them at events. Right. And I always leverage wherever I'm speaking, inviting the local press to come in and cover these international speakers and give them the traction they deserve because they've traveled. Right. Most promoters don't do that. I know the power of press, the power of publicity, and you don't stop. You don't scratch the itch once you keep it alive. Keep yes. the motor, keep those wheels nicely greased. The bearings are greased. That wheel has to keep going because the more media it compounds the snowball effect that we shared about earlier. Inertia begins with media. You are on Apple News, Yahoo News. I'm seeing your banner up there, all legitimizations for what you do. Let me share my uh, background, which I use and show people. These are the stations I guarantee people can get on if they embrace my media. You know, there's the Fox 5, CW, NBC, ABC, and CBS which is all there. These are the stations that people get coverage on when they want to get it done in two days here in Las Vegas. That starts the snowball to open up more markets. Right. You know, like I mentioned with you, I've got a friend who guests has guested 50 times on a show in Tampa. I'm mm -hmm. going to introduce you to her. You never know who she knows. And then I'm going to owe her a favor because if she does me a favor and gets you on the show, you never know. The door is open. And it's a matter of exercising those connections with people who are doers. 
not right. people who sit on the couch eating bonbons with butter popcorn, scratching, watching Netflix. Okay. That's a bad visual, but the scratching we can leave out. But you get the <laughs> idea of the bonbons and Netflix. Okay. Yes. When I was a pitchman on Home Shopping Network in the 90s, that was the visual. It was Martha on the couch, whacking that credit card, buying stuff impulsively. And we loved Martha because yeah. that's how we were able to stay employed and, mm -hmm. and, and thriving. You know, it's a matter of out there exposure as much as you can regularly. Never say no to the press. Right. And podcasting. I believe there are many opportunities for people to become guests. And, you know, I, I was asked by a couple of people, why are you bothering with podcasts? You're a TV show host. Well, it's a new platform, new audience. Yes. New market, new connections. I'm talking right to the producer. You're the producer. You're the star. You're the talent of your podcast. You have a team that supports you. Yes, that's smart. That's called leverage. But there, you're a new market for me. We never met until today. Right. And you didn't meet me. You see opportunities in me. I see opportunities in you. That's called reciprocity. And when you get out there with media, more doors open. Be a kind person. Be authentic. Be generous. It'll come back to you. Yes. I think those are some of the key components I might be and if you have a humorous side to you, excellent. You're from the East Coast. Of course, you embrace humor. So it's important to maintain and thrive with these connections. Oh, 100%. You know, if you have the motivation and you have the dream, your dream will come true if you put the the effort into it, you know. And a lot of times people see the outside of it and they want all that glamour. They want all that glitz. They want this. They want that. But are you willing to put the energy in? Are you willing to put it, do what it takes to get there? And yes, TV is so important. Being in the media's eye is so important. You all, Once you step out of the media's eyes, people forget you. You always right. have to be in the media's eyes. And being on TV and being in the audiences that have large audiences, that's what you want. You know, you can go on a podcast, you know, and, and you can have, you know, you could you could have a small group of people, but is it if it's the right audience, you you might make some sales. But if you can get into groups of the media where there is large audiences and those are your audiences, you struck gold. Right. And that's what you really want for yourself. You want to try to figure out how do I get in, in the media's eyes on a consistent basis, show my talent, show my ability, show what I can do for other people, because other people always want things in return. What can you do for me? Well, I'm here because I could help you with X, Y, and Z, you know, and, and be able to show your abilities and to be able to have the personality where people are going to like you, trust you and respect you. And if you could do that, you could do anything. Yeah. And surrender their wallet to you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, we talked about monetization earlier. That's how you monetize. No mm -hmm. like and trust and deliver. Yes. Deliver. Under promise over deliver, then you have clients for life. And there's a difference yes. between a customer and a client. A customer comes in and buys, it's transactional. A yes. client is relational. Yes, 100%. 100%. You know, and that you, you and I will have a relationship, a professional mm -hmm. relationship. If I were just coming in here one time, that's transactional, we're done. Right. Most of your people are going to be transactional. I mean, are, are going to be relational. No, mm -hmm. transactional, excuse me. The relationship right. has a different level. Uh, mm -hmm. And you want to embrace relationships. Like I have strong relationships with the media here in Las Vegas. I right. take care of them. They take care of me. I provide quality guests so they know when someone comes into a live show and that light goes on that says on air, mm -hmm. this isn't a recorded deal. This is on air, live <laughs> audience you cannot say can i start over <laughs> no no and if that happened to one of my guests i would crawl under the biggest rock available and never come out <laughs> because i would be done but yes. i prevent that i prefer to train somebody thoroughly go through the questions we mock interview to make sure they're ready speaking right. in sound bites yes. so that way they're ensure a quality interview.
quality output, engaging content. So they're not looking down, they're smiling, they're upright, shoulders are back, no nose hairs are visible on camera, you know, no cooties coming out of their ears. All of these things matter. It's a full package that needs to be addressed before you go on air. And right. I know some people say, well, what, well, I have a YouTube channel. Listen, 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 Billy, Billy, <laughs> listen. Okay. A YouTube channel is not television. Hate to right. tell you, anybody can open with a few clicks can have a YouTube channel. That yes. doesn't mean you're a quality journalist. Right. People go to school for this for years oh, to yeah. know how to engage, how to connect. And because you hang it and you've got a nose ring does not mean that you are a quality YouTuber. You just, you know, you might've created some of these selfie videos and you've taken your shirt off to show your bare chest. Wonderful. <laughs> that might work with the gen, whatever generation. Uh, the, the Z's, the ones with the bare chest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I embrace my fur. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Comes with the package. So that's, uh, you know, there is a calling for these different audiences, but if you're selling a high ticket item, do you think that audience wants the ones that are going to be buying your high ticket item? are going to be embracing you if you're shown drunk dancing on Instagram or on Tiki talk. <laughs> I don't think that's your platform, you know, and it, it wouldn't be well exercised. Have a professional LinkedIn profile. It all starts there. I'm right. a big fan of professional LinkedIn content because it's just a headshot. It's a very yeah. nice headshot. Should be smiling, good banner content, good bio, all of these things laid out clearly what they get working with you. And LinkedIn has been a goldmine for me. Yes. LinkedIn is excellent. LinkedIn is excellent. People have to really, and I, I think a lot of people realize how powerful LinkedIn is now, but you have to take time. You know, just like if you were going to send a resume out to somebody, you know, right. would you send a resume out, you know, just, you know, looking like scratch, you know, you would do the best job you possibly could to make it look like it was a million dollar resume. Because if you, if it's a, looks like a million dollar resume, it makes you look like a million dollar person. And that's the audience that you want. Well, and, you, and when people ask, well, what's the definition of personal brand? I'm going to skip the college definition or for the professor definition. It's what they say about Stacy when she's not in the room. Yes. What do yes. they say about Mitch when I'm not there? Right. That's the reality that I must accept until I decide to change it. Yes. I can alter perception and right. it's possibly through media, possibly through how I dress, how I convey myself to the public. Yes. And it's not what you think it is sometimes. That's why blind yes. surveys are important. What they yes. say about you when you aren't present and it can hurt. Yes. Take it as positive feedback that you can either learn from or cry in your soup. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Or do and more then, of the same. You you know, you can use it as a learning experience too and improve yourself, you know, but you want you want to make sure you don't have to do that. You want to go out there and you want to give them 300%. When you work with people, like you said, you want to give them 300%. You, you always want to come out on top. You know, you want to look like you come out on top, you know. 100% agree. So we're we're there. And uh, what would I say about Stacey who wasn't in the room? Ambitious, mm -hmm. engaging. I think it has probably a generous heart and truly cares about people. That I would be a personal that. brand assessment and, and not settling. Mm -hmm. Because most that. people to get to where you are would say, wow, I've arrived. That's it. I'm going to kick my feet up. Let's go to Tahiti or maybe <laughs> your East coast. Let's go down to uh, maybe the Bahamas or, or the Dominican <laughs> Republic and get more value for the money. <laughs> <laughs> You're right on the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I so yeah, that is so true now if you had to like look at everything that we talked about today and yeah. you had to, you know if you wanted to like 
gives some really good emphasis on some of a conversation we had. What would you want the readers to acknowledge? What are some important factors that you think that, you know, not, not readers, listeners, you know, the people who are listening today that really want to make it big out there. They want to be a success. They want to be heard. They want to be in front of the right media. They want to be acknowledged. They want people to know their name, know that they exist, know what they do, and they want to go grow up the ladder. You know, what are some of the things that you'd like to emphasize? Okay. It'll start small and do it. Recognize your achievements. It's a, it's a ladder. L visualize a ladder. First step, do it. Do a podcast interview. Study it. Take another step up that ladder. Bring your feet up again. And don't stop. Embrace print media online print media, online uh, publications, get on podcasts, get on radio shows, get on TV, write books, plural, plural, series of books, plural, works very well, and continue that process. Once you, that, that itch is never scratched completely. It's going right. to come back. You're going to want to do that. Scratch it again and again and again. Because guess what happens? Any competition that you thought you had is in your rear view mirror. Yeah. You know, and according to Italian racing, they don't use a rear view mirror. Doesn't matter what's behind them. Let's just keep going forward. The race right. is ahead of us. And keep climbing, keep climbing into the clouds. It's a never ending deal. It's not kick your feet up. Doesn't mean you have to stress yourself out by, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I got to do this. Take yeah. the opportunities and create your luck. Create mm. being lucky. Now, what is lucky? Opportunity plus action. Yes. Opportunity plus action. Embrace it. I mean, when you, you meet people all the time, we all meet people. If you're in a positive mindset and you have a winner mentality and believe you deserve and seize opportunities, not in a greedy fashion, but you embrace opportunities, more opportunities will open up to you. Right. If you think it's half empty, guess what? It's going to drain. Mm -hmm. Half full, keep embracing the possibilities of half full. Right. Because the biggest battles you're going to experience are in between your right ear and your left ear. Yes. And the people you surround yourself with. Negative Nancy's, let her go be negative somewhere else. Negative Ned, let him go play in the sandbox. Mm -hmm. You don't have to partake. And the life is a short snapshot. Before I knew it, I looked in the mirror. Oh my God, I'm old. It happened. You know, it just happened. And I wouldn't have gotten here in the state I'm in had I listened to the negative people in my past. Yeah. I even want to mention something personal my father biological father i didn't really have much of a relationship with didn't meet him till i was 17 but at 19 he decided to impart his life long wisdom on me it might have been a negative motivator and he wasn't bright enough to think of it that way but i do now looking back he said mitch you really don't have much of a personality i was working for a grocery chain as a fa as a frozen foods clerk in the freezer. That was one job. And I was also teaching martial arts, but I, the, the ready job and the paid benefits was working at a market middle of the night, throwing up stock of frozen foods. And he said, you ought to stick with that job. They pay you benefits and you're not good with people. I'm just saying, these were his exact words. I'm just saying, uh, mm -hmm. and you ought to, you ought to. So he was giving me unsolicited advice, which I did not ask for. Right. You ought to stay with this grocery chain you're with called Ralph's Grocery in LA. And maybe you can become the frozen foods manager one day. And no, not just the frozen foods clerk, there was a manager of the department, which would give me another 50 cents an hour. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and I looked at him and for a moment I considered it. But even at that young age, I thought, wow, 
I don't want to be like him. I didn't look at my father in the way that many young men look at their fathers or their dads. He was not my dad. He was my biological father. I must give him that. I couldn't help it because I looked just like him. And he had I listened to his unsolicited advice, Stacy, I'd be working in a market. I'd probably be retired with back surgery at this age. Right. Dreading over what I could and should have done. Right. Instead, I pushed against that without saying anything to him. Didn't really have much of a relationship. He died when I was in my early 30s. It was a kind of a non-event. I didn't know him that well. It may sound cold, heartless. It is just what it is. He was not my dad. He was my biological father. Didn't talk to him for many years. And when, before he passed, I explained to him what I'm doing today. Do you remember when you said blah, blah to me? He says, oh, yeah. Well, this is what I'm doing today when he was in the hospital. Just wanted to bring it to your attention. I didn't do too poorly. And I called him by his first name. He, I'd never called him dad because he, he, he didn't earn that title. Yeah. And I shared it with him. Maybe it was mean because he was on his deathbed or no, he, he was just sick at that point. He wasn't dead. He was just sick. And I shared it. It's oh, oh, well, uh, good for you. Okay. Well, you did better than I did. So it's part of it is the competition thing. And I yes. want to leave the listeners and possible viewers that are that embracing this. The closest person to you isn't necessarily the one you should listen to. Yes. My mother had passed at a young age, so I didn't have that opportunity. She would have never said something like that to me. She was already out of the picture. Right. Unfortunately. And had I listened to my biological father versus other people who were successful, who had achieved the ranks and levels that I aspired to achieve, Right. I would have been meaty ochre. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with being a frozen foods clerk slash manager. We need all of those. Not everybody has the same aspirations. It might have been fine or is fine for someone else. No criticism of that. We need plumbers. We need carpenters. We need all these professions of society for us to function. It yes. just wasn't my dream. Right. It wasn't my path. Right. I chose a different path for me. I saw something different. I don't even want to say more. That yeah. is demeaning. Stacy. I think it almost is demeaning. We say, I want more. No, I want something different for me. Right. It's a more humble approach because we absolutely need, you know, Ed, the electrician. We need Bob, the butt crack plumber. We need right. all of these professionals in our lives. You know, Steve, the pool man, all of these people are necessary for the ecosystem to function. Yes. And I've never talked to any of those people in a demeaning way. Well, you're just this, or you're just that. No, I've never addressed a police officer as a civil servant. That's right. not right. They're people who knows what they dreamt about. Maybe they wanted to be, a plumber and have a, their weekends off, or maybe they like to come to be the rescue. And that's part of their psyche to yeah. be able to rescue people whose toilets are backed up and they feel fulfilled with that. God bless them. Nothing wrong with them. And it's mm -hmm. no, I wanted something different when right. I, I cringe when people say, I want something more. You're demeaning the people that are at that level. No, yeah. it's not higher. It's sideways. Mm -hmm. It's a different path to get to here. Yeah. We embrace a different path. I'm content with that. Mm -hmm. I'm better than nobody. Right. Nobody is better than me either. Mm -hmm. Even during the years that I lived in Thailand, I remember getting into near battles, physical battles with some Thai people because they have what is called a monarchy. Mm -hmm. To us as Americans, it's ridiculous. Why am I bowing to a guy that came from, came from monarchy and he's of royal blood? No, he got there and there was bloodshed a couple generations before that. That's why your grandpa was the king. He killed the right. current line. Mm -hmm. And these people say, well, he's, I love my king. I say, good for you. 
He's just a man that puts his pants on one leg at a time. Oh my gosh, I might have insulted generations of people. Mm -hmm. This person went ballistic. How can you say that? He's above. I said, we don't bow to our president. And, right. and during this time, I think George Bush was in office when I had this discussion. And I said, I don't bow to my president or Obama was in office. Excuse me. I said, I don't bow to Obama. If I meet him, we're going to shake hands eye to eye. Yes. We're equal. Everybody's equal in the American society. Nobody's better than anybody. Yes. 100%. That's the foundation of one. Now, do I respect what he's done? Do I respect the office of president? Surely I will call him Mr. President, yes. as I would call your king, Mr. King, or, or your highness or whatever. I would do that out of respect. I'm not dropping to my knees, bud. No yes. way. You can. You're Thai, but I won't. Right. And it's because I come from the mentality everybody's equal. Yes. And we can ascend and go to a different level than we imagine but it's just a different level, not higher. I don't right. like that terminology. And I, I push back. And I might be offending some people at the risk of offending some people who are listening to this. Who knows? There might be a Thai person listening to this. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, a royal got there by luck. Right. By birthright. Not because their blood's any bitter than ours. Yes. I don't know how you feel about that, but I, I didn't like it. No, I agree with you. I think we're equal, you know, and that's how equal. it should be. We're equal, you know, and uh, I see people, people, they, they look at other people and, you know, because they have higher status in other countries and they, they bow down to them. They faint, they, you know, whatever. And, and they're equal. They're equal. Correct. I said, we have a president and that's who we elected. And that's the highest office in the land. And this person had the position. Well, that's that's not a king. A king is higher than your president. I said, excuse me? Mm -hmm. One was given this simply because he was born into it. One yes. earned it. Yes. And it just takes one, one button and Thailand doesn't exist. Right. Huh. America is, is, is a different country. You've got a great country. Let's just say we're equal, different cultures, and we're equal. Exactly. So I got off on a tangent here a little bit. Sorry about that. But no, I, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. No, you made your point very clearly. You know, it's it's great to elevate to higher levels, but in the long run, we are, you know, we we're all equal. You know, it's just some people have different aspirations, some people have different, you know, views of, of where they want to be in life, and that's all good. You know, but what our views are, we have to, you know, we have to understand what we want in life and what we're, where we want to be. And, you know, and that's why we have people like you to take it to the next level, to get there. You know, if people have aspirations to to get to higher levels and they want to elevate their, you know, they're an author and they they really want to get their book out there or if they are they want to get in front of the camera or if they want to really be known for the achievements and for all the hard work they put out there. It, it is all possible with the right person, you know, backing them and, and showing them and guiding them, giving them, you know, showing them the way and having the connections to do that. Now, when it comes to connections, what type of services do you provide? Because I know you do a lot for your clients. Well, the, the one that I do here in Las Vegas or I provide here in Las Vegas is get interviewed, Derek, guaranteed .com forward slash meet with Mitch. If you're interested in getting on TV, that's the booking link to have a 30 minute call with me to go through what I can do for you. If you want to get on television and radio and on my show here in Las Vegas, it is a pay to play. I provide a it's a fee based service, but with a guarantee. And I compare that to other publicists who charge. I mean, if you hire a New York City publicist, you're looking at 10 grand a month with a contract of six months. Mm -hmm. And they might get you on TV in certain markets. You may be flying to Des Moines. I do it all in two days, guaranteeing multiple network television interviews, live interviews, and a radio show interview, and a recorded interview on my show of 30 minutes, if you so choose. But that's where they can go. 
getinterviewedguaranteed.com forward slash meet with Mitch. Now I'm sure it'll be placed in your show notes. Yes, it definitely will. All this information will be in our description. People will be able to contact you and get in touch with you. And we will have everything in our in our show notes also so people could see everything and contact you. This has been amazing, Mitch. You know, I, I really enjoyed having you on the show. You had a lot of great input. And there are so many people out there that work so hard to get their message across. People have great messages. Everybody has a great message. But there are some people who go the extra length because they want their message heard because they believe it could help others. And those are the people that, you know, need people like you so they can get their message across so they can actually be heard. And maybe in the long run, the people who hear them can actually utilize the information and actually change their lives for the better. So, you know, thank you so much for what you do. I really appreciate everything you do. And I appreciate all the knowledge you shared today. And I just love the way you think, the way you do things. And just the way you view life in general is just phenomenal. And I really enjoyed this conversation and hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Stacey. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day.